because there have been these, these extremely important uh, efforts as apologies, and there have been critical individual and institutional solidarities being express, expressed about, across civil societies across both countries. The government of Pakistan, the state, has remained obdurate in refusing to acknowledge the events or their responsibility for them. Uh, as mentioned this morning, Pakistan's sole effort to date, where it's never been officially acted upon, was the commission of inquiry presided over by retired Justice uh, Anwar Rahman, uh, formed in December 1971. The report of that inquiry commission, of course, challenged Bangladesh's claims regarding the numbers of dead, the numbers of war affected, but it did admit widespread killings of civilians, including intellectuals, the Lloyd officers and soldiers, and the indiscriminate killing of Hindus. It also admitted the use of rape and sexual violence for revenge, retaliation, and torture. <coughs> and of course, that report wasn't made public until very, very many years later. Within Bangladesh, in the immediate <coughs> aftermath of the war, there were high expectations that those responsible for the atrocities would be prosecuted. Although the top ranking leaders of the Pakistan army were not within the jurisdiction of Bangladesh, and many of the leaders of the so-called auxiliary forces had also fled. There were some 92,000 Pakistani prisoners of war held in India along with civilians. However, as a consequence of a number of agreements, uh, as a gesture of goodwill, so, so he characterized, India began the repatriation of the 92,000 PWs and civilians to Pakistan. And ultimately, 195 Pakistani POWs who were allegedly implicated directly in the atrocities were left. But then they too were allowed to be repatriated. And Bangladesh permitted the return to Pakistan of Pakistani nationals alleged to have committed atrocities. That is certainly correct. But Bangladesh never stated, neither importantly did Pakistan, that the responsibility of any state to try such persons for their crimes had been denied or erased. Indeed, Pakistan itself earlier argued before the International Court of Justice that it had had exclusive jurisdiction to try such persons under Article 6 of the Genocide Convention. And I think it is therefore clear that repatriation of these 195 POWs was on the understanding, however flawed or naive, that Pakistan would hold true to its commitment to hold such trials. But as we know, that didn't happen. In the meantime, in Bangladesh, the Palmdin Statute was enacted in 1973. Uh, there were also separate legislation brought about to try so-called collaborators. But it should be noted that many of the most senior collaborators and those against whom there were very serious allegations of involvement in abductions and massacres had left Bangladesh immediately after the war. Uh, many to Pakistan, some to Saudi Arabia, and many, interestingly, to the United Kingdom and also in the US, where some of them remain today. Um, and I think this is maybe a point for just a quick parenthesis that we had a discussion this morning about the issue of the assassination of uh, the quote-unquote assassination of Olaki. Uh, the speaker had mentioned the point there are no charges against Olaki. There are no charges in any jurisdiction against persons who are accused of serious allegations of war crimes in Bangladesh other than in Bangladesh. But that doesn't mean those allegations don't exist on record. It doesn't mean because a state hasn't brought charges that there are not testimonies and affidavits and statements by survivors about what had happened. There are those regarding Bangladesh war criminals, but the issue is there are no processes to bring them to justice. The issue is that human rights works in a complex fashion where persons accused of, as I said, massacres and abductions are now able to claim human rights protection by virtue of being citizens of the United Kingdom and entitled to guarantees under the European Convention, including protections against extradition to any country which perpetrates the death penalty or carries out torture, but we in Bangladesh have no protection against that or against them or any means of seeking redress. So these are some of the unhappy contradictions and difficulties which we face when we do believe in enforcing human rights. Now, the silence over the issue of justice for atrocities was ruptured. Um, it was very difficult to speak about these issues for many, many years, but it was ruptured in moments. Um, and one of them, one of the most important moments, perhaps, which Nani Mukha alluded to this morning, was the holding of the so-called Godmother of the People's Tribunal in 1992. This was led by Jahanari Imam, known as Shahid Tolani, a mother of a martyr who had lost her son in the Liberation War. And uh, the People's Tribunal served to coalesce long silence commands 
of justice to the crisis in 1971. Uh, <coughs> the event that was held in Dhaka at that time garnered massive public support, and in retrospect, it was a clear landmark in the movement for justice relating to 1971. 